Coconuts, it's me again, and today we are going to be discussing the Blood Moon, which is an event that happens generally once a month, and like Golden Moon, it is its separate section. The devs tend to give away one free port for Blood Moon that gives you four hours of time in it. If that's not enough time, or if you've port home early, it's really easy to get another port for the cost of 5,000 gold. What a lot of people like to do is port in, in tandem with the events that are running. For example, if you are a smaller citadel and you're not set up for defense or attack, it wouldn't really benefit you to port into Blood Moon during an event where there's a PvP kill going on. You can take a look at those events by going into your event center and clicking on the Inferno event. And that's going to show you what the current event is, what the upcoming events are, and what the schedule is. You can take a look at the progress of your kingdom. And you can also see in the points tab how you're going to get the most points. You can also see what your contribution is and who is within the top 10. And I'm so excited to see Fast and Gucci, those are my boys, within the top 10. Now you can get to Blood Moon, and I recommend by doing so under a shield at first, by going into the world, going into your kingdom map, and then clicking on the globe in the lower left corner. And then you can see where your blood moon is. You do have to pull out any troops. You cannot be in golden moon when you want to go into blood moon. It will not allow you to do so. And when you click on blood moon, it will ask if you would like to use that port that the devs give you. Or it will ask if you want to purchase a port for 5,000 gold. When you click on it, it will randomly port you into Blood Moon. What you do from there is you should take a good look at your boost and see if there's anything that you want to use. Because I'm going to be hitting some of the stronger strongholds, I wanted a march size increase. And with world, I'm going to go into hunt and a hunting march speed as well. If I wanted to gather, I would do gathering and troop capacity. and Although I'm going to unshield and I don't mind taking a hit, I am not particularly set up uh, to defend yet. Up until last week, I only had 4 million troops. Now I have about 6 million. However, the majority of them are T3s. Um, I am still focusing on my research and gear. And once I get that where I want it, which I'm almost about there, um, then I can focus on setting up my troops for defending. However, since I'm not worried about that, I'm not going to use any of those buffs. What you can also do if you're worried about your higher tiered troops is you can go into your castle. Go down to your warehouse. And choose the evacuate. And you could put for 2,000 silver, you could select your higher troops and have them evacuated. There's a plus side and a minus side to it, and the minus side is obviously those troops will not be there to attack if you are in battle. However, the bonus to that is they're hidden away, and so they cannot get hit. However, in Blood Moon, it only costs food, so food and speeds. So this is an excellent place to risk it for the biscuit and drop your shield. So I am going to use the search icon, and you're going to notice that your level 30 strongholds are pretty hard to find. Blood Moon is really good about recirculating them and bringing them back up, but your level 25, 30, and 35 strongholds give out the most silver. Um, your level 26s and 31s are going to give out the most food. Uh, 27s and 32s give out wood, and so forth. In Blood Moon, strongholds give out 30% more resources than normal, except for food, which it'll give out twice as much food as normal. Because this is a kingdom versus kingdom event, 
whenever I pour around a hit, I generally try to take a good look at what's around me. And if there's anybody from my kingdom, as there is right now, you'll see their tag is in blue. I don't like to encroach on their territory because it's all about keeping points away from the other kingdoms, not about keeping points away from your own kingdom. You're always going to have that guy that just doesn't care and they're going to hit whoever it is, even if it's from their own kingdom. But most people try and be a little smarter than that. So I'm going to go to a bloody because I want to unshield. Here's a level 30. Three is a really good chance that I'm going to be hit by this guy. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll, but there's also my dude. Well, my dude here is under a shield, so he's obviously not hitting the bloodies. And my little dudes aren't going to take too much of a hit. So I'm going to go ahead and attack and we're going to see if he's paying attention that I'm there. And uh, see if we can get baited into getting hit. And I'll show you guys, it's really not that scary and really not that costly within Blood Moon. From under a shield, if you're a smaller citadel, you can hit those monsters. You can gather the resources and you can hit all the chaotic strongholds that you want. Here we go. So someone sees me. They're going to come in for a hit. I'm just going to patiently wait for them. After they hit me, I will then port away and shield up. And we can see what the damage is. I really wish they'd hurry it up. Oh, they're just scouting me. That's no fun. Alright, we'll take a look. I have my anti-scout on. Because I feel like if they're going to risk it, I'm not going to let them know what they're hitting. So this is a general gist of what you want to do in Blood Moon. If I do end up getting hit, I'll splice it into this video. <laughs> I'm sure eventually at some point I will, but I'm not going to make you guys watch me for 40 minutes just until someone hits me. I'm a tasty little smack for somebody out there. I like to use the 8 hour bubbles for this reason. You get a lot of 8 hour peace shields by doing your town mode. And those make it fun to use because nobody really likes to use those. <laughs> to, who wants to check in like every eight hours if you're not going to, you know, do anything in the game? But they're fun to use because you have so many that if I want to be outside of a bubble for 40 minutes here, I can. And if I want to do something else, I can just throw that eight hour bubble up. And if 10 minutes later I decide, you know, I want to hit some more bloodies and unshield, then, mm. you know, I can do so. Okay, here we go. So enemy, enemy march is attacking. They're speeding it up. Evo warrior attacked me. So I am going to then pour over here. I'm going to throw up that peace shield. And we're going to go inside. We can see I've been hit. So I'm going to extinguish, I'm going to repair, got that going for me, and we're going to take a look at troops. We're going to go into triage, and we're going to see here that they got all my T3s. They did pretty good. And uh, it's going to cost me 435 million food to heal. So I'm going to select all, I'm going to heal it, and then I'm going to hit help for the days, 
and it's going to cost me 21 days. So we're going to speed that up. We look at the mail, we look at the battle. I was hit twice. First guy injured 3.8 million. Probably all my T3s. And the second guy got into a few of my T5s. So, considering I only have about 6 million troops, not too bad. And then in the process, because I killed their stronger troops, I achieved some growth missions and some of that rewards. So there you go, guys. Um, if you want to leave a comment, go ahead and do so. And don't forget to like and subscribe, because it makes me feel loved. And uh, make sure you check out the website, ironthroneelite.com. As usual, you can peruse that. If there's articles there that you would like to see placed into a video, just let me know. And until next time, guys.